Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorsone, channel is called Ethernet Wink. Today we're doing Python. The last videos have been C++. Um, here we are doing some Python. We're on Quant Connect, so that's always a nice experience. But yeah, what we're going to be doing today is custom indicators on universes. If you can read sideways, I don't know how good you'd be at that. But yeah, that's the whole vibe that we're doing. You can see just a little backtest I have here. And this is all the code, of course. I already have it all written. We're going to go through, I'm going to explain it, and then it'll be in a discussion forum for you. So some imports, just so you know that they're there, but it's not important. So what does this algorithm actually do? Well, we select the 50 most liquid stocks that we can find, just sorting them by dollar volume, by liquidity. And then we apply a simple moving average to it and a custom indicator to it. And it's like, well, how do we do that when we don't actually add each stock to our algorithm? Well, that's the point of this video, is so that way we could go through. So we have our universe settings here. We set them to be asynchronous. Set the I actually don't even need to do that. That's for if you want to trade options with it. We set our universe resolution. I'm just setting it to be hourly. Custom security initializer, we'll get to that in a second. And then we actually add our universe. This risk I'm just adding to be quick. And then these are dictionaries, so that way we could store the value of whatever indicator it is for each symbol. And then just setting a warm up. So now let's actually go to this security initializer first. Right, right down here. Because this is actually where we make our indicator values. Because it's a new class, algorithm is QC algorithm, like how we have up here. And so, yeah, when we initialize it, we set self.algorithm to be this parameter. And we're also just setting a period, because why not? Just that way we don't have to change both of them. We want to change the period. In our initialize, we call super, and initialize security with QC algorithm. I believe that's how that actually works. And then, just to future proof it, if security type is an equity, then we actually add these indicators to it. So we set our SMA dictionary, which is just a regular simple moving average from Quant Connect, to be period. And then our custom indicator, custom dictionary, we're setting, giving it the symbol and period. It doesn't need to be the symbol, it just needs to be a name, but whatever, I just put that there. Now, let's talk about our universe before we actually get into what the custom indicator is. But that's how to do it. That's how simple it is <laughs> to store these values. Because in our universe, First thing, we're doing, first thing we're doing is we're selecting variables that have fundamental data, sorting them by dollar volume, and taking the top 50. That's all that is. All it is, very simple, very intuitive. So now when we come down to the custom indicator, it's this whole class, this is the Hearst exponent. And this is how I'm doing it right now. I'm not gonna lie to you, got it from a chat GPT conversation. I have found zero consistency when I look around online for a Hearst exponent calculation. And when I try to make it myself, it just doesn't feel right because I know I should have lags in it. But um, I I haven't found one that is like, this is what the formula is, because it's a rescaled range analysis. If you have ever read this book, The Misbehavior of Markets, which I encourage you I encourage you to read. Can I hold it correctly? There we go. It's a great one. And he talks about long memory in it a lot, the, uh, the author Benoit Mandelbrot. Very smart man. Regardless, we have this class, and it's a Python indicator. So when we call it and we initialize it, we have a name, a value, which is the valid indicator, a period, the look back, look up here, whatever, and a queue. A queue is like, it's like a list, but it's not a list. It's a queue. You know what I mean? It's one of these. It's kind of, it's like a queue. It's like a rolling window. It's pretty sure add. That's how to put it. It won't grow. If the max length is 20, on the 21st, it gets rid of the oldest one and puts that one in there. But yeah, so we have this function for a rescaled range analysis for a chunk. So for our time series, we're going to make it an, a NumPy array, get the length of it, the mean of it, cumulative length of standard deviation, the range of that, and then standard deviation of the time series, and then compute the rescaled range, which is R over S, which is the range of the cumulative distribution and the standard deviation of the time series. So that's that. And then when we go into our actual function to estimate everything, 
and we divide everything into chunks, adding up that rescaled range analysis, and we're just finding an average of it. And then we're appending it, there we go, and then just find the log of the values and the log of the, well, the log of the indexes, really, and then the log of the rescaled range analysis, really. Yeah, for all the RS values. Then polyfit it, and that is our Hurst exponent. So we have to set self.value to be the Hurst exponent. And we're saying return is ready. Is ready will just be true if we have enough data in our queue. And update takes in a float. For the Hurst exponent, it needs to be returns. So when we come up here, and we're going through, we want to use our active securities, everything in this universe. Check if it's, make sure it's in our custom dictionary. If it's not, we don't want to trade it because we have no data. And then for our update, we're passing in the return of the bar. So open minus close. And then our SMA dictionary, we're just updating it like you would the regular one in Quant Connect, just update it with time and close. And then if it's not ready, if neither of our indicators are ready, do nothing. If they are ready, check if we're already invested in the symbol. If we're not, look at this condition. Make sure that the custom dictionary, I mean, the custom dictionary, make sure that the Hurst exponent is above 0 0.5 and that our security is over its moving average. If it is, buy some. That's all that is. And when you run it, you do get this result. It seems to be a cool and high performance algorithm, but you know, I could have made this return 2000% for the sake of this video, but. I could have overfit it, I could have done whatever I wanted, but I just really wanted to focus on custom indicators in universes. Now, watching this video and copying and pasting this code and changing your custom indicator to be whatever you want, maybe you're not a software engineer at all, and that's good enough for you, right? But if you're someone who wants to be a little bit more serious about software engineering and about coding, if you're stuck on something, like I was stuck on this, you know what I mean? Like I, there was one point I didn't know how to do this. So you kind of look at documentation and you go through and you bang your head against the wall for four hours and then you got it, right? And I put out these videos because I know that people would enjoy them. And because if you don't need to become a good programmer like that, you just want to make your idea, then maybe that'll spark your interest to become a good programmer. And then even that, you'll go through and you'll look at this and you'll say, why, why do I need super here? Why do I need why do I need it here? What does that actually do? And then you go through and you learn about it. And then you become a good, pro good programmer. But I encourage you guys, even though it would be in my interest for you to follow these videos and watch them all the time, I'd encourage you guys to to be careful with how much you copy and paste from ChatGPT, how much you take from YouTube tutorials, and um like how much you think about things and try to find the perfect way to do something before just trying to do it. But yeah, that is the video. That's how to do that. Um, for loops and dictionaries. <laughs> um, I have a business. It's called Prometheus Analytics. These are the kind of indicators that we make. Reversals and long alerts, short alerts, more reversals. This is it on SPY. You want to trade, you know, you want to trade futures? We got you covered. You want to trade stocks? We got you covered. You want to swing trade things? That's on a two minute. We still, we still got you. It's still usable. Trade fixed income. You want to do that? I don't just want a ribbon. I like volume profiles. Whoops, that's awkward. Well, we can go through. We can do a bunch of stuff. Um, I want price action. I want. I want levels. I want a volume profile. You can go through and you could add all of that good stuff with a Prometheus Analytics subscription. Uh, well, yeah, there's no volume on this. Uh, let's go through. Put on here. Here we go. There is all the garbage. <laughs> of course, volume profile looks great. Pro uh, price action suite. You have a ton of settings. You can do whatever you would like on it. I like to look at it like this, so that way you can just get to see the auto-generated support and resistance. You like to day trade, throw it on a lower time frame, 
you get everything there, throw on the red zones, and you get automatically generated levels that you get to trade off of. That's something that I would interest you. Link is in the description. If not, now you know about it. But yeah, the link to that QuantConnect code is in the description. The link to my Twitter, link to the business, the link to the business's Twitter, all in the description. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Be well.